Hey folks, so we get to talk about Nintendo Switch sales. Now, I didn't cover the MPD from last Friday, so I'll go over a few details from the MPD, uh, but we're going to be focusing on the recent release of the Nintendo Switch, uh, well, let's just call it the Nintendo Switch sales charts in Japan, because it's actually the sales charts for all of gaming in Japan, but Nintendo Switch at this point owns 94% of the market in Japan. It's pretty crazy. Uh, but before we get into that, we are giving away a Nintendo Switch or an Xbox Series X or a PlayStation 5. To enter, uh, head down to the description or the pinned comment to find out how. We will be announcing the winner during a live stream at the end of the month. All right, let's first take a look at the Famitsu numbers because that's what's new. Uh, and then we'll briefly touch upon the MPD. Here are the Famitsu numbers. I got this over at uh, Reset Era, where there is this this uh, person who always puts out the numbers every single week. Uh, and as you see here, the top 10 is all Nintendo Switch games. So, Momotaro, Densensu, Showa, Hensei, Riwi, Mo, Taiban. I'm sure I totally butchered that name. That is the only game in the top 10 to see an increase in sales to 107,064 units on Nintendo Switch. I don't know anything about that game, but it is clearly a big seller in Japan, already at 1.6 million on Switch. At number two, we have Animal Crossing New Horizons selling 36,000. It has now moved uh, 6.5 uh, million. You know, so it's got 6,553,618 units, down 20% week over week. Uh, we have Ring Fit Adventure. Popping off here at 35,397. That is now at 2,237,398 units. Also down 20% week over week. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe uh, chimes in at number 4 at 26,636 units. That has moved 3.6 million finally. Uh, that is down 22% uh, week over week in terms of the sales numbers. New Super Smash Bros. Ultimate chimes in at number 5 at 17,099 units. That has now moved 4,109,327 units. That is down 29% week over week in terms of the weekly sales. Uh, Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics at number 6. Uh, at 15,295 units. That has now moved to 601,384 units in that country, down 27% uh, week over week, that is. At number seven, we have Minecraft Nintendo Switch Edition. That is uh, moved 14,430 units, uh, moving 1,774,814 units. At number eight, we have Splatoon 2. Back in that top 10 at 11,640 units, moving 3,743,798 units. That's just a 16% drop week over week. We have new, uh, well, sorry, not new, but Super Mario Party uh, for Nintendo Switch at number 9, uh, moving 10,069 units. It has now moved 1,797,617 units. That's down 22% week over week. And then finally, at number 10, we have Pokemon Sword and Shield. Moving another 9,882 units. That now sits at 3,929,246 units. Down 18%. Likely going to hit 4 million at some point this year. Uh, if it can just kind of trickle at 5 to, to 10K sales per week for a while. So, kind of good news there. Uh, what's interesting is that out of all this top 10, all of the games, <coughs> except for two, are Pub well, really three, are published by Nintendo. Pokemon Company technically gets credit for Pokemon Sword and Shield, but we know Nintendo gets a healthy cut of the sales of that game. So technically seven of the games are published by Nintendo. That is huge. All ten games are for Nintendo Switch. Why is that? Why is Switch dominating? This is the second week in a row now where Switch has owned the entire top ten. Well, let's look at the hardware sales. Hardware this week, Nintendo Switch, which combines Switch Lite and the normal Switch together, and the normal Switch is way the predominant platform, sold 170,691 units. That's actually slightly over 3,000 unit increase over last week. Now, last week obviously saw a drop off over the week before, but that, at that point we were looking at uh, holiday sales numbers, uh, which are obviously not realistic to hit holiday sales every week. It seems like the Switch is just kind of settling in. There wasn't any major new release or anything. The Switch is just settling in at, hey, we're going to be a system that's going to sell over 150,000 units every single week for the foreseeable future. I mean, wait till 3D uh, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury hits. Wait for Monster Hunter Rise 
That's a big seller. Monster Hunter is a big seller. We're talking three, four, five million kind of seller in Japan. And who knows with Switch because everything is selling more in Switch. In fact, what's crazy about the software numbers, just commenting on those for a moment, is that's just physical. That's just physical sales. And we all know digital is making up a bigger share of the market every single year. So who knows? what numbers those games are really at, except for Nintendo. Uh, and what's exciting for Nintendo sales data is, hey, I think the first week of February, uh, usually it's the last week of January, but they're doing it the first week of February this year, uh, is an investors meeting, and we're going to get to actually get real sales update on everything from Switch units uh, to software units and all that all the way through December. Uh, so we're going to get all the holiday sales counted, and it's going to be it's going to be very interesting to see where Switch is sitting lifetime to date. And many of these games up here where they're sitting uh, lifetime to date in the whole world. Uh, so, yeah, last year, obviously, Nintendo Switch only sold 96,458 units this week. They kind of show that Nintendo Switch has basically doubled the amount of units it's selling week over week, year over year. Now, there has been some concern uh, that Switch might be at its, at its peak. In terms of it's plateaued now and it's going to go down. And that is because the MPD sales uh, data had Switch at number one uh, for sales and, and in terms of units sold and in terms of money made. But the sales were basically flat with December of last year. So when the sales in the U.S. area are flat with the sales from last year, it kind of suggests, okay, the Switch is kind of plateaued and now it's going to go down but as you're seeing in japan that is clearly not the case the switch continues to gain momentum so is that really the case uh in the united states or did nintendo just not get more enough units out there or they just produce the same amount of units for december both times who knows uh we'll have to wait and see uh, what mpd data is going to say for switch in january and if it continues to see year-on-year -year growth because uh, it was slightly up in december but it, it was pretty much flat according to matt piscatella Oh, you can see the breakdown here. PlayStation 5, of course. We're not going to forget about our, our next-gen brethren. Uh, we have, well, I guess they're current-gen now. 7,328 units, down 4,000 units. I don't know what is happening with PlayStation 5. In fact, if you scroll down here, you're going to see this chart here showing that uh, PlayStation 5 can't even keep up with Wii U. Now, we know there's obviously a shortage of PS5, but there is a prevailing theory out there that PlayStation 5 is actually being deprioritized in Japan by Sony since they moved their gaming stuff headquarters over to California. So it's it's interesting. All the marketing for PlayStation 5, by the way, some of it doesn't even have Japanese translations or Japanese versions. It's all in English. So there's definitely some uh, devaluing of the PlayStation brand happening in Japan as we speak. I mean, you can look at PlayStation 4, which is nothing to snuff at. Over 9 million sales is nothing to snuff at in a single country. But PlayStation 5 is not doing well in, in I mean, only 29,000 units. Switch is at 650,000 for the year. Now, granted, Switch is in its heyday right now. It is peaking or still on the way up to the peak. So, yeah, Switch is going to obviously be outperforming everything. But, I mean, it's barely ahead of the PlayStation 4 for the year. PlayStation 4 is at 28,118. PlayStation 5 is at 29,000. When you're barely able to beat the last-gen system, it lets you know that the system might be dead in the water in Japan. Now, they still have shortages. They're still selling out. So, who really knows? But if they're selling out and there's only 7,000 units available this week in Japan, yeah, Japan is not being prioritized by uh, Sony anymore. And that's a little bit sad to see, even as someone who is uh, mainly a Nintendo guy. It is sad to see, you know, a company whose home is in Japan, was founded in Japan, um, that they might be kind of just giving up on that market. And that kind of makes Nintendo Switch the only viable system because 3DS, you know, 546 units, you know, these are just trickle sales. Nintendo doesn't even produce 3DSs anymore. Um, then you have the Xbox Series, you know, that includes the S and the X selling 160 units, which is up week over week, but still, you know, it's not great. Um, obviously, 31,000 units is, is significantly less than the PlayStation 5, but uh, yeah, this is this is interesting. Switch is, I mean, I think at this point, we could safely determine that Switch will likely pass 3DS sales in Japan this year, or come close. Uh, they sold, sold almost 6 million last year in Japan, so it's going to be close. I don't know, you know, if Switch is still, you know, climbing up the mountaintop, maybe it'll outsell the 3DS this year, but uh, Switch is going to end up being Nintendo's most successful 
platform, I think, in, in Japan uh, when it's all said and done. So, yeah, it, it, it's pretty crazy to see those sales data. I mean, here, here's some additional points we can look at for this. Um, you can see that over the years for Switch, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. And you kind of see they all kind of start high because they're coming off the holidays, right? Um, except for 2017, of course, which starts over here since it launched in March and it had a huge launch in Japan. You know, not even the peak, though. Last year, it was Animal Crossing. There's the Animal Crossing peak. If you want to think, uh, what did Animal Crossing do to Switch sales? Well... Um, more than launch, more than launching a system done more than any holiday period. So, uh, what's interesting here though, is that you see the switch 2020 was heading up and then even though it, uh, it, it, it nosedived here in 2021, it nosedived down to 170,000 ish units or 160,000 and 170,000. Whereas look at the nosedive in all the other years below 125, uh, below a hundred thousand below fifty thousand not so this year and if this chart continues i mean you could see a trending upward trend or the switch might stay you know if the switch can somehow stay above one hundred fifty thousand, it's going to be like this all year to start to really peak so we'll see nintendo is is on to something here in japan uh you could see uh you know year-to-date sales 2020 was way ahead of everything else for Switch. 2021 is already starting ahead of that. So we'll have to see. Nintendo probably has some major releases coming this year. Uh, so, yeah. I said I'd talk briefly about the MPD. Uh, there isn't... I mean, there's a lot of sales data. The, the, the big take takeaways are things like Call of Duty is continuing to show growth. Um, it continues to be a very strong IP. It looks like Assassin's Creed Valhalla is probably about over 10 million units at this point, uh, which is really good for Assassin's Creed, so congrats to them. I actually find the game to be quite good on Xbox Series X, um, but you know, to each their own. I know some people are kind of fatigued on that on that kind of game from Ubisoft. We obviously have, have the Nintendo Switch data where it was the best uh, dollars and uh, unit sales for December. The interesting part is it's the best dollar sales since 2008 Nintendo Wii. 2008 Nintendo Wii was slightly ahead of uh, of the Switch in terms of dollar sales. Now, you might say, why is that? Well, there appears to be more unit sales of Switch uh, from in December in the U.S., than the Wii in 2008, but some of those unit sales were $200 DS lights, uh, or DS lights, uh, $200, see, look at that, it's a confusing name, $200 Switch lights versus, obviously, the $300, $250, I guess I should say, uh, Nintendo Wii, so uh, with all of them being that, maybe the average average spend was obviously a little bit higher, so I find it to be really cool, I think Switch is killing it, again, the US market's going to be, to me, the most interesting one because it is the one that showed a flat line essentially from December to December, even though November was significantly bigger. Uh, so we'll see what happens. It could have just been as simple as Nintendo didn't get enough units out there to do have a better December. Uh, or it simply put, demand maybe is going down now as we're starting to get out of the pandemic. Is it too early? It's probably too early to say that yet. I know our healthcare workers, police officers, um, other personnel out there are, are being vaccinated at this point but i would not say that we are obviously out of you know covid we're, we're still very much dealing, dealing with covid so very much having to wear masks everywhere so very much having businesses closed down schools affected homeschooling all that jazz so we're definitely not out of the woods with any of it yet in fact we are we i hope we get out of it at some point in 2021 but who really knows we might just be stuck in this for another year hopefully not too but life will find a way uh, as it always does and the Nintendo Switch continues to find a way this platform here is the most dominant platform I've seen in quite some time uh, I thought the 3DS did okay for itself did extremely well in Japan but just okay worldwide yeah 75 million nothing to scoff at but 75 million what's that mean I mean this thing's already passed it's already outsold the 3DS you know it, it this thing is going to become Nintendo's best-selling you know, home console for sure. It, it, it's going to outsell the Wii, right? 101 million or whatever. It's going to outsell the Wii. I'm starting to wonder if it maintains this momentum, you know, in Japan and the rest of the world all through 2021, which it very well might if it has the right game lineup. I think Animal Crossing was a big boon last year, came at the right time, clearly. Uh, 
you know, Monster Hunter Rise will come at the right time in Japan. Well, you know, I don't know how, how big that's going to be here out in the West. What about, you know, if we get a Breath of the Wild 2, if we get another Mario Odyssey game or something. Nintendo has a path here, depending on what they release this year, to continue to be a massive seller. So if that happens and Switch continues to blow up, and this is me even hoping that we get revised Switch hardware, which is always going to help. Uh, so if they release, you know, an even more powerful Switch, that would be fantastic. I don't think that ruins momentum at all. I think it just maintains momentum. I think that Nintendo, it feels weird saying this, but they have a puncher's chance to do DS-type numbers. A puncher's chance. Now, this is going to require them to sell $20 million a year for the next two, three years. Okay, that's, that's a big ask. It's a really big ask, but is it impossible? In fact... Is it impossible for Switch to sell 30 million units in 2021? Or I should say fiscal year 2021, 2022, since that's how Nintendo counts it. Is it impossible? I would not say it is. I think Nintendo probably probably is going to end up selling close to 24, 25 million this fiscal year. So a 5 million increase. If momentum continues the way it is, sure. Or the Switch is already plateaued and we're going to start coming down. I don't know. All I know is... I'm really happy that I own a Switch. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the platform, despite some of its obvious flaws. Uh, Joy-Con drift being some of the worst. Or for me, uh, the fact that these caps came off quite easy. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, but that's my kid's fault more than anything. I don't think if I was the only one using the Switch, that would ever happen. I'm sure my kids picked at them or something. Um, but I've never had caps come off that easy on any of my other controllers. You know, like Switch Pro, I know these are, are different control sticks. I don't even think these things come off. Um, I'm kind of surprised they're removable, to be honest. But, hey, it is what it is. I'm I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty happy gamer over here. Got lots to play. Lots on the agenda. Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury coming up here. I can't wait to play that one. Um, yeah, that's what I got. Catch you guys in the next video.